Our first speaker is Michał Rachtan. Uh, he is also from the company uh, Unidate. And Michał started his education and... Uh, uh, I will wait a little bit. He started his education also in Poland on the same uh, University of uh, Science and Technology in Kraków, which is... Okay. Which is one of our famous places in Poland uh, for educating AI researchers who are just now uh, working on all, all across uh, the world. And uh, very early he started working on machine learning, also doing uh, some summer schools like in Sydney or here in Switzerland. And he worked uh, together with uh, Marcin in Swisscom for, I think, five years. And after this, he worked in Palantir Technologies, uh, uh, where he was working, having gaining some experience with data science in aerospace, investment banking, and advertising. Uh, right now, he is a CTO and co-founder of Unidate, and he will be talking about his uh, nice project. Thank you very much for introduction. Glad to see so many people today. Um, what I would like to talk today about is what we do in our free time and what are the causes that we consider important. So this is one of the projects that we work for a few weeks and it's uh, detecting pneumonia. You know, sometimes we would like to think about ourselves as superheroes and this is one of the times where we could do, do something that we really believe it's important. Um, so you might think pneumonia is not a problem today, but actually it kills every year around 1 million uh, people. It affects mostly children below year of five and mostly in sub-Saharan Africa. So only year 2015, one in six children were di died due to, due to this disease. So pneumonia is a, a disease that affects your lungs and uh, prevents you from uh, breathing. Um, there are two kinds of pneumonia. One is uh, caused by virus, one by bacteria. And today, uh, the best uh, method to uh, detect or diagnose that someone is um, sick is to use X-ray images. Unfortunately, there are a few problems with X-ray images. So either they are not available or specialists are not available where they are. So it's sometimes very hard to find, uh, especially in such areas like Africa. Also, training takes long time, um, up to five or six years to do that. Uh, apart from that, images are sometimes very vague and even there are some, sometimes conflicting opinions between specialists looking at this, those pictures. So what we could do about it. So as you know, uh, in the last few years, there were amazing breakthroughs in computer vision technology, uh, mostly driven by, tech by techniques like deep neural networks and especially convolutional networks. And we've seen uh, since year 2012, huge evolvement of those, uh, or improvement of those techniques. Um, there were many um, architecture proposed and today we see plus 90% accuracy on object detection of those, of those um, objects on those images. The huge contributor to this, uh, to this improvement was a project called ImageNet, which provides around 40 million images that were labeled by humans. And um, also evolvement of computation, yes, like GPUs and um, computational power, which allow to train those networks. So here a little bit more how the state of the art um, <coughs> te technique looks like and how, how does it work. So how many of you heard about convolutional networks? Yeah, great. So you probably know there are basically two stages of the network. One is responsible for developing features, recognizing edges and uh, 
uh, boundaries between uh, two colors, the middle parts responsible for, for detecting shapes, textures, and finally we arrive at detection of whole shapes of like, for example, faces. If I see shape of the nose or shape of the eye, together there is high chance this represents a, a, a face. And at the end, you see there's last part that is responsible for classification. So it re basically translates representation of the picture into something more meaningful. In that case, a label, is it like the car or dog or something else? Usually these networks require a huge amount of data and resources to train, um, which might be problematic. In our case, we participated this in Kaggle challenge where we got over 5,000 images, X-ray images for pediatric patients a year one to five. Those images were labeled by specialists in two, two categories, normal, healthy, and sick person. Yeah. But 5,000 images is not sufficient to train such a big network. Yeah. Um, here are just two examples. One is a uh, normal picture and the other one is pneumonia. Uh, sometimes it's not that obvious like here and requires really specialists. Uh, they, ha they need this muscle memory to know where the organs lie in the chest and a little bit of um, experience as well. So what we are gonna do here, we are gonna use something called transfer learning and we use pre-existing pre-trained network and repurpose it to our use case. So we're taking one of the networks that was available um, with high performance. Uh, it was trained on this ImageNet data set to classify things like, like dogs, cats, cars and other objects. And what we're gonna do is chop or make small surgery on it, remove the last layer and retrain it while maintaining all the weights uh, in the first part or at the beginning. We're gonna stream all the images through it and just change the weight at the ends. And we're gonna have two classes, normal and um, pneumonia. Um, we decided to use this network uh, developed by uh, Oxford University, uh, one of the computer vision groups. Uh, it achieved high, very high performance in the past. Um, this is how it works. This is how it looks. It's, uh, it has 16 convolutional layers. And at the end, we're gonna be replacing just this part. Uh, here is an example how it works. So as you see, it correctly classifies dog, uh, also a sports car. But when we present it with x-ray image, it just yeah, not very helpful. So, okay. So it's actually quite easy if you use frameworks like Keras to uh, play a little bit with those networks. It doesn't require even a lot, lot of code. We're just gonna uh, take the network, this VGG16, uh, train on ImageNet, we download all the weights, and we replace the last layers. So things like here, flatten, and dense means that we add another layer at the end. It's a fully connected layer. We are gonna use softmax classifier or activation function um, and we're gonna retrain it. So only after four hours we're gonna use magic of television and show you the results quicker than that. Uh, it's much faster with GPUs of course. So now we have a network that correctly classifies those images. I, there is example of pneumonia as, as you see there is really high score for for the image. So it's quite amazing that with progress of those te technologies and open source, 
uh, frameworks like Keras and TensorFlow, you can really repurpose such a network and make quite big uh, or quite good results, um, achieve quite good results really quickly. Here is like uh, here is our summary of the results. We achieved 85% with little effort, um, and we're gonna be presenting more results uh, on our blog. You can follow us. Um, we're gonna have comprehensive story and blog posts about it, how we did that. So thank you very much. That's all for today. Really, really happy to take all questions. We have the time for questions. Thanks for your presentation. So you said you want to do engineering for good, but you just this is a, a model you train on some data. So to actually have some impact, the big challenge is how you're going to deploy it. Yes. Can you share some ideas on? Uh, how this can take place? Yeah, so that's a really good question. So uh, way we think about it is to popularize the knowledge about the problem there, there is. And we think participating in competitions like Kaggle uh, and uploading also our methods and results might help in that, in popularizing knowledge. Of course, this is not going to uh, directly influence the situation there in Africa, but at least uh, this is what we can do with part of our time. Yeah. Are you going to make an entire software open source? With yeah, yes, it's all open source. Uh, it's going to be on our blog post. Um, yeah. Any more questions? Somewhere at the back. Yeah. Something I'm missing when uh, I see these uh, like analysis of medical data. So you said that you use data that have been labeled by specialists. Yes. Obviously, they will make mistakes. Yes. The whole problem of your, of your algorithm is better than doctors. So, yeah, I see a little bit of vicious circle here. So, using <laughs> from specialists, and you won't. Principle to be better than that. So, if you want to label a cow, this is going to be very accurate. Mm -hmm. So, I, I see two reasons why that might be helpful. First of all, uh, there, are, there are places where such a specialist is not uh, present or it's not available. As I mentioned, it requires like probably several years to train specialists like that. Uh, so, this is a place where such a technique might come handy. Yes, imagine like you can have a uh, a device that can make make diagnose without presence of such a specialist. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thanks a lot for the talk. I was just wondering if you can share a bit. Uh, I mean, how you improve the, the accuracy that you got? Mm -hmm. Did you go to several iterations? How did you, how did you evolve how did yeah. you your models? Yes, there, there are probably more we could do, uh, more, more things we could do uh, in this space. So as, as you notice, we train only the, the last layer of the neural network. Uh, you, can deep, you, you can probably improve results significantly if you um, um, I kind of unlock other layers like deeper in the network and retrain those. Uh, you can also do manipulations of the pictures and kind of generate the more more data to fit. We didn't try any uh, all, all of those. We have ideas and we'd like to try it, but um, we have also some directions how to do it and ideas how to do it. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a still a work in progress. <clears throat> Thank you very much. And uh, uh, we'll be um, maybe on apparel. Uh, just yeah, just uh, maybe a, a last question. Did you try to retrain your whole network with the data to see your 
Yeah. No, I didn't mention, but this network has around 130 million parameters, and it would require probably a lot, of probably days to retrain retrain it on our <laughs> on our computers and even on GPUs. Um, so with this technique, transfer learning, we minimize the search space to 16,000 parameters. So this is uh, three, three or four orders of magnitude lower than uh, in terms of parameters. And for that reason, we are able to use only four hours to achieve such a results. But you are right, you, if you could retrain whole network and have more, much more time and resources, we probably could get more, better results than that. So it was like trade-off time versus uh, data versus computational power. So uh, thank you very much, and if, if you have. Uh, <laughs>